It's lights, camera, action over here, boy. The Blue Jays starting a series with the Chicago Cubs tonight. The fire burning my soul, the passion in my eyes. My people starve, the hunger pains feed my desire. Right at Chapman, how about that recovery? And he throws him out. Here comes Springer on a run, on a dive, and he makes another great catch. Down to first for the out, coming home, and they got him at the plate. What a night on defense for the Blue Jays. Who gonna stop me, though, until the curtain close? Pull up a chair, sit back, and watch the shot. Blue Jays are trying to change their luck in the dugout. Hey, whatever it takes, fella. Swing a high fly ball, deep left field, goodbye! Boy, did they need that. Best Chapman delivers. He ties the game. 4-4 four, four in the eighth. And Danny Jansen with a huge night tonight as the Blue Jays walk it off. Swinging a miss. Got him with a splitter. He's getting his share of strikeouts. That is six now. This is really a perfect recipe. Gosman gives you seven good innings. Sit back and watch the show. It's back to business. Toronto as the Blue Jays who are providing you with the ebbs and flows of emotions over the course of a season clearly are going to face a guy who made a significant contribution to this franchise for several years. Marcus Stroman gets the start for the Chicago Cubs. Teoscar Hernandez back in the lineup for the Blue Jays. Kevin Gosman on the hill for the home side and they pulled off a much needed victory a night ago it took 11 innings it wasn't the prettiest thing in the world but it got done they're back in the win column looking for another one here tonight so glad that you've joined us here on Blue Jays Central I'm Jamie Campbell Caleb Joseph Joe Siddle has removed his shoes you'll understand a little while uh, here on the program but first as you know if you tuned in last night the Blue Jays trailed for nothing going into the seventh inning and they were able to get some heroics from Danny Jansen with a three run home run that got them back into the ball game. But then this in the 11th as he brings home Matt Chapman and that wins the ball game for the Blue Jays. It was a joyous occasion quite obviously and consider that high leverage OPS is as it sounds. It's late in close situations or any two out scenario with runners in scoring position and lo and behold Jansen leads the ball club in that category with an OPS over a thousand. So uh, that's notable and you won't find it at all surprising he's back in the lineup tonight. As mentioned it's an emotional roller coaster it seems these days because the Blue Jays are sitting in a wild card position the last of three but just two ahead of the Baltimore Orioles. So every game is important even these games against non contenders as we discovered on the weekend against the Angels. All right it wasn't pretty uh, but the win column doesn't care if it's pretty or not. Let's send it down to Hazel May near the Blue Jays dugout. Jamie, last night's comeback victory was the Blue Jays 31st of the season that ties them now with the New York Yankees for the most in the American League. And after a tough weekend against the Angels, the opener against the Cubs wasn't exactly a must win game, but you have to think the Blue Jays desperately needed to get off on a positive note in this series. 34 games to go in the regular season and as you saw they are right in the middle of a very tight wildcard race. Well last night's hero Danny Jansen told me this we're fighting and pulling for each other. We've done this before. It really is one pitch at a time one at bat at a time and just continue to fight. Now this Blue Jays leadership group which happens to include tonight's starting pitcher Kevin Gosman believes that in order to get on a sustained run down the stretch the veterans in this ball club really need to draw upon their past experiences and guide the rest of the team uh, through some late season adversity. Here's how they do it. Trying to be in each guy's corner you know and and really uh, 
let them know that I'm as invested in their career as they are, you know, and I'm watching every at bat. I think that's little things that we can do as veteran guys to just let them know that like, this game is really hard. It's going to beat you up. You got to just find a way to, to power through it. And obviously we put ourselves in, in a good spot, you know, with 30 some games left. It's kind of crunch time now. But we got guys with World Series rings and a lot of playoff experience in that locker room. Jackie, George, myself, Phelps, um, you know, it's got 10 years in the big leagues. Those guys, including myself, need to, you know, take it on um, to be vocal leaders and to look guys in the eye and tell them that things will turn around and also hold guys accountable if we see things that um, need to be turned around, right? But, you know, for the most part, it's just picking each other up. You look for guys who have been around to kind of take the guys who haven't been around under their wing a little bit and say, hey, we're a good team. Um, Everything's okay. It's not the end of the world, and uh, we still have a lot of meaningful baseball left to play. We know that up to this point we haven't played our best brand of baseball for an extended period of time. I think that's coming. I think we all know what kind of team we can be, and it's just the biggest message is just making sure we have 26 guys all, all fighting for each other, all lifting each other up. A common theme there is we welcome MLB insider Shai Davidi. Uh, this is a time for leadership, but also a time to really draw upon those past experiences, particularly when it comes to these meaningful games, games of importance. So what do you think this team has taken away from last year's run? You know, Hazel, even for the non-veteran players who ha don't have a ton of experience, last September was a little bit of a taste of it, but it's different this year. And I was talking to Bo Bichette before the game. It was a really interesting point that he made. It's like, this is different because last year they were chasing, they were in the position that the Orioles, the Twins are in right now. It's maybe a little bit less pressure because they're not being stalked in the same way. Right now the Blue Jays are, have to fight to maintain their own position. They also have to keep in mind that they're trying to chase down the two teams in front of them. They would obviously rather have home field advantage than not. But none of that can bleed into their process. And, you know, he made the point that a lot of other players are making right now. Stay within your focus. Focus on the day. Don't let anything get too big because that's when things can get out, out of hand. And lurking in the background, of course, is the way the Blue Jays finished last season, falling just a game short. So how do you think that factors in all this? Well, that's in everybody's mind. And that's a point that man interim manager John Schneider made. It's like, look, we got a lesson over the weekend with the Angels that you know other teams are here to beat us and if we're not at our best that might be a game that could potentially cost you because that's what they experienced last year and so keeping that in mind understanding that it, any one of these games could be the one that makes a difference an experience they actually lived last year is something that they can carry into the field with them every day knowing that one little slip up could be the difference. And George Springer, as we take a look at him uh, there in batting practice, he told me that the team in the other dugout, they're still a major league team. He says they are a team, regardless of whether they're having a good or a bad season, they are still a team full of professionals and they still have to play their game. That's it from field level, Jamie, as we get ready for quite the pitching matchup for the home side, Kevin Gosman, and the return of Marcus Stroman to the Rogers Center mound. Hazel, let us hope the reception is a wonderful one. Now, a point of frustration for Blue Jay fans a night ago was in the 11th inning when Santiago Espinal was unable to advance the runners on a bunt. Explain why, Joe. John Schneider talked today about how his team had a much better game, and they did a lot of great plays by the Blue Jays last night to get back on the winning track, especially after a miserable weekend against the Angels. But not everything went so well, and we're going to focus on an attempted sacrifice bunt by Santiago Espinal called upon later in the game. It was his second plate appearance, but it wasn't a very pretty one, Caleb. Go through the details of what he's trying to do in terms of advancing these runners. Yeah, so remember, it was first and second, and on that play, you have got to make sure that that ball goes to the third baseman. And how do you do that? You set the angle out in front, so it goes to third base. But why does he have to field it? Because that runner at second base has to be able to advance. Now, the first baseman's crashing in. At that point, if you bunt it to first, he's going to pick that ball and throw it to the lead back. If there's only a runner at first, then you want to go to first base because the third baseman would be coming in. At that point, I'm not 100% sure if he was committed to which way he wanted to bunt it. And for such a small play that happens once in a blue moon, 
you've got to make sure that angle is right and make that third baseman make the play so that they can advance. Let's go through it. Let's take a look at what happened and what went down here with Espinal at the plate last night. And he's got the bunt sign. And you'll notice the infielders, the shortstop staying home. You have to get this ball down to the third baseman. And as Caleb said, if the third baseman comes to field the ball, the only play is to first base. The only place to go would have been first base. Sometimes the defense will have the wheel play on. That was not the case. Look at the shortstop. He's right behind second base bag. So if he gets this ball down to the third base side, third baseman field, it gets the out, the runners are advancing, and then you have Danny Jansen coming up. Now, did Danny Jansen save the day anyway? Absolutely, but these are the critical little parts of a game that can win and lose ball games late, especially when you're getting down to the playoff run. Now, I know back in when I used to have to sacrifice one, I used to think stick my nose in there. Like literally, you have to feel like you're on top of the plate and getting that bat out there too. No reason to be back here and off the plate. Move up, get on it. The Cubs knew he was bunting. That You're not trying to surprise anybody. Yeah, you're right. So stick your nose in there and get it down. You're right. Being able to deaden that ball, hit it off the end of the bat, allows it to go slower, making the third baseman come in. But it's about setting angles. Set your angle here. If you're going to first, set your angle here. Out in front, just like Joe said, head behind the ball. You, just, you move up so that you're in fair territory. So, look, real small techniques that usually you learn in little leagues. But, hey, sometimes... It plays out in a big league game in an extra inning, and it might have cost them a game yesterday. And we may see it again down the stretch. You're hitting at the bottom of the order. You have to get those little things done. Jamie Espinal is in the starting lineup tonight, and the hero from last night, Danny Jansen, back behind the dish. Fundamentals, gentlemen, need to be executed if you're uh, going to advance in the postseason. So here is that lineup. As Joe mentioned, the number seven hitter is Santiago Espinal. Straight ahead of him, Teoscar Hernandez, who sat it out last night. His last 15 have not been good. In fact, you like it? he has struck out almost half the time in 54 at bats in about two weeks of play. So we'll see if he can find his offense tonight. Danny Jansen did last night. And he'll be handling the catching duties tonight as Kevin Gosman gets the start against Marcus Stroman and the Chicago Cubs stay with us on Blue Jays Central.